Last time on Lucky Fish. Rory and I rushed to get the boat back in the water, sailed a hundred miles south to Cape Town and cleared out of South Africa. This week it's still a race against the clock. The girls were getting ready to leave Mongolia and fly to Namibia. While Rory and I set off from Cape Town for a 500 mile passage north to meet them. I was still learning the boat and Rory had a lot to teach me about setting up the warren for long fast passages. It wasn't long before we ran into fog and shipping. We were still learning the radar and the AIS. Bearing its distance, okay. Oh, the closest um, passing, I think, thing is what that means. This is quite spooky. The wind returned the following day. The self steering wasn't working perfectly, so we went to work removing friction from the system and balancing them. How's it looking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. We disconnected the wheel by cutting the steering lines at the tiller arm and replacing with snap shackles. Whee! Nice correction. That's nice mate, I got a little bit of video of you earlier when you were working on it and now, you know, this is the fruits of your labours old son. You got a South African flag in the background? Teamwork mate. <laughs> Teamwork. It was nice, that was cool. What a day. Stuart, Rory and Otto. Oh, true. Like a, like a sort of like a bumper sticker collective, yeah. This is where Rory really started his magic. He saw the boat as a sailor's playground and jumped all over the stay sail when he saw it. With its built-in wire luff, we could fly it anywhere. First, he set it like a small spinnaker. Rory said it took him 1,000 miles to learn this trick. Yeah, no, you go for it, mate. I'm just going to record the, uh, the head. Hoist the gaff in front of the stays when running downwind. He set the sails so they touched nothing. No chafe anywhere. Here are both gaff sails hoisted in front of the side stays. We set the heading on 350 and the boat sat within 5 degrees, most often just 1 or 2 degrees either side.
The boat loved this rig. The speed did not fluctuate over a big range, just sat steady and comfortable on a fairly high speed. The wind stayed mostly up and the miles clicked away steadily. Our best day's run was 185 nautical miles. With the self-steering now working flawlessly, we had time to prepare proper meals. <laughs> Keep an eye out for ships and enjoy the sailing. Yeah. Because it's all a matter of sharing what we do, isn't it? It is. Well, I think that's really important, you know. Even the world of sharing, um, and sharing very easily. Occasionally the wind would get up to the mid-twenties and the boat would really fly while staying completely under control. Here's the view and noise in the head in these conditions. This is the forward port light in the starboard hull, just above the bow wave. <laughs> yeah, a double surf like you say. We kept the boat racing as the girls had already arrived in Namibia and were preparing to fly to Luderitz. As we approached Luderitz, we hardened up on the wind to close the coast and round the point into the harbour. We changed from the downwind rig to a reaching rig, dropping the staysail slash spinnaker, unfurled the jib, dropping the foresail, moving the gaff behind the stays and re-hoisting. Dark looking little settlement that isn't it, whatever it is. Negative, um, but anyway, um, the DP star, I'm having the lucky star, it's a sailing yacht. She's outside, also, please just have a look out for her as well. Okay, good, then thank you, I'll turn back at 612. Lucky star put control. Yeah, lucky fish receiving. Sorry, lucky fish. Um, yeah. Um, Master, can you please just stand by for me uh, more into the lagoon area because I'm having a departure as well and also an arrival for the dredger. Um, so that they can just pass clear and um, as soon as the dredger will have a position inside the channel, then I will call you and have your details over. Uh, thanks, Port Control. So uh, please confirm we can enter the uh, lagoon area, uh, but stay outside the channel. Uh, over. Yeah, just for a while, so the, the, the TV staff who's 
departing now from port can pass clear and also the dredger is entering port and as soon as she is inside um, then I will give you a call and direct you where to come in. Over. Yeah, I received. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll stand by channel one two. Well, on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, I don't mind if they want to offer it. Uh, getting a message out to Zaya would be really good. Yeah, I mean, that probably, you know, we're using up our contingency here. Uh, so they'd like to hear from us tonight. We arrived just before sunset having covered 500 miles in 80 hours at an average speed of 6.3 knots. No sooner were we secured on a mooring, local guide and sailor Gunther immediately came out to meet us, complimenting the warren. He kindly offered us the use of two dinghies and a lift to the airport to meet Zaya and Toya the next day. Dredging activities went on all night and into the next morning. We went ashore to complete clearance formalities at the customs office and port control. After a quick look at the historic diamond mining town of Luderitz, we drove out to the airport where Gunther explained a little of the history. It's called Diamond Mountain, Diamantberg, yeah. so called because in the days before diamonds were found, diamonds were discovered in 1908. Uh -huh. uh, the first biggest business here was uh, the uprising in 1904. Soldiers came to town, the harbour was developed, brothel on the mountain for the soldiers, bottles out the window, mountain covered in glass, it's Diamond Mountain. Uh -huh. and, After months of planning and with a sense of relief that everything had fallen into place, I was reunited with Zaya and her sister Toya. Crazy van. So we're going to take our trailer, yeah? <laughs> well, we love making videos and sharing our real life experiences with you. Now after 10,000 miles we've got a ton of new video to edit and I'm worried that we're never going to catch up so we need your help. So Stu does all the video editing if you haven't noticed. <laughs> 
Also, you don't know that he works part time for to fund our travels. No one cares, honey. As long as the videos <laughs> come out. <laughs> now I have learned to sell, and I'm starting to help a bit more, especially with the camera. Yeah, you a lot of help. Which saves him a lot of um, voiceovers and editing. Yeah, there's a lot of time that goes into sort of putting the voiceovers in and then stitching a story together and trying to keep it informative, educational and factual mm -hmm. as well as be entertaining. Um, but now our videos have changed a lot as this following clip will show. Why are you wearing a sheet over your breasts? Have you so just I been having... I don't want to be another naked... Video. You don't want to be in any more naked videos. This is an interesting topic, honey. We need to explore this with the viewers. That's the viewer. Not, this is not. This is a dress. What I'm saying. Looks, looks like looks a bed like sheet to me. I don't know. No, it's a dress. Is that the best that your boyfriend, husband can do? Is it in the way of dresses? Yeah. It's broke. What's the issue? This bloke is broke. broke. Look, yeah, what's the issue with the broken bloke? No good, no money, no honey. No, Hi. I think the saying is no honey, no money. Starts <laughs> from you, no, no money, no honey, no honey, no money. Uh, no nothing. <laughs> no patrons, no money, no honey. <laughs> Listen. All right. Well, we really want to start releasing the new stuff, but at two videos a month, we're never going to catch up. Editing video and interacting with you guys is something that we really want to do full time. If you can help us, then please become a patron on Patreon. It's like leaving a tip each time we release a new video, and you can limit your contribution to as little or as much as you want. When we reach the next goal, which you can find on our Patreon page, Toya will come back to join us. She's <laughs> yeah, she's working in Mongolia at the moment and dying to come back to join us. Because she keeps seeing the fish you're catching. Uh, she's yeah. jealous. Yeah, she's <laughs> very jealous. Uh, but the Mongolian flights are not cheap to get here. And including yeah. the visa fees and everything. Well, it's halfway around the oh, world, isn't it? Up. Yeah. Um, Good news is, we have a patron helping us with his discount airfares, which is helping. Yeah, it helps a lot. A lot. Thanks, helps Peter. A lot. Yeah, thank you, Peter. It's a uh, thumbs up to you, mate. It does help a ton. <laughs> but it's still not affordable for us to bring someone, you know. Yeah. Something about broken blokes. <laughs> <laughs> broken blokes. Ah, well, at least it was money well spent. That's the way I look at it. As always, everyone, please like, comment, subscribe and share. Those actions help us a lot. They sure do, and any help you can provide is greatly appreciated. And you'll find links to our Patreon and PayPal sites in the description below. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Next week, Toya goes sailing for the first time. We get some more sailing tips from Rory. And the girls get to work finalising the boat before we set off across the Atlantic.